everybody. So we're gonna switch it up today. Instead of working on the good old Z32, we're gonna be working on my Q70 Infinity with the 3.7 liter. Um, and I point that out because today we are gonna be installing VQ Carbon Customs two and a half inch intakes. VQ Carbon Customs um, doesn't just do the intakes, uh, the two five intakes for the VQ platform. They also do carbon fiber steering wheels, carbon fiber shift knobs, complete aftermarket replacement carbon fiber steering wheels, and a majority of other things. I actually think they do more than just Nissan Infiniti at that, but uh, you'll have to check out their website. The point of this video is to test the intakes and we'll see how they fit and everything on the Y51 Q70 platform. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there and I just decided I'll be the test dummy and try it out and this might save a lot of people some time and some searching to find an intake that works for them. As you've probably seen on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they've been installed uh, mostly G37 coupes, sedans. It puts the intake filter right behind the grill. So today I'm going to test all that out and see how they fit on the Q70. So I got to start this thing up and uh, we'll pull it out and bring the Q in and get started. Silicone tubes. Let's check out the filters here. Just a pretty standard filter. Uh, these couplers are for the tubes to the intake, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't fit. Clamps, of course, and the other filter. All right, everything's laid out on the table. These are obviously for the PCB, come off the ports. I'm gonna have to cap mine. Obviously, uh, I don't remember the company's name, but I kind of copied their stuff. And I did an atmospheric version of the PCB, capped just like their kit, um, hosed off. No, I do not have oil sprayed all over the engine bay. I just put the cover back on last week, so it's been like this always. I mean, it is dirty, but there's not oil all over the damn place. You do smell it though. At an idle, um, after the car's been running for a little bit and then you come to a red light, you smell it every now and then. So I might actually take those and dump them down um, on the side of the block so they go under the car and I never smell them. As you can see, my current intakes. What people want to know is it actually two and a half. And as you can see, it is two and a half inside diameter. Sorry, that's really hard to do with one hand. Couplers as well. It's really hard to do this one hand, but it looks like two and a half, if not, like we're talking one tick off. It is very close. Um, these are definitely pretty sturdy. Um, I don't see these being an issue. Um, all the hardware looks legit. Um, the intake pipes are actually very clean. Um, start getting them on the car. A little bit of a jump forward. I removed the intakes that I made. Um, everything's removed. You obviously have to remove your bumper, which always sucks, but it should be pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Man, I wish I sat that low. That looks so good. Um, I did Dremel this out for my intakes. I ran a full metal tubes or aluminum. The idea behind these are to fit in there and then they can take a little bit of a squeeze. Obviously I didn't want any kind of restriction, a bent tube or anything like that, and I'm sure most people don't. 
because that causes turbulence. And I'm kind of happy I did Dremel it out because maybe these will fit a little bit more um, efficient without any bending in there. Let's get to it and see uh, how they work. All right, skip forward again. The intakes are on. Like I said, I did Dremel mine out. Honestly, looking at it, I don't think it would have been necessary. Um, this is the trouble side, which is the driver's side because of the AC lines. So I do have mine pushed out of the way. Um, I did before because of the metal piping. Um, but no pinching. Fitment's good. Um, I set the bumper on there and they're directly in the middle on each side of the symbol. I will say I don't think the PCV would have worked. Um, it's very close. As you can see, I had to rotate the pipe for it to fit and everything line up properly without it being all uneven. Um, they do not line up. Um, there's the valve cover inlet. There's the intake inlet. That's obviously not going to fit. Maybe if I trim this all the way up, I can probably get it to somehow fit with some finagling. But even at the same time, if we go to this side, here's the other one. This one's very close. I'd have to bend it and get it. Um, yet again, same thing. Maybe if I do some cutting and some custom, uh, I don't know, custom cutting and fitting, I can get it to work. Uh, so I just went to the store, got some caps. If you do do these on a Q70, uh, Y51 body style like this, uh, I recommend doing the atmospheric PCV, which I recommend anyways. Keeps the intake track clean of oil. All right, so I've ran the VQ Carbon custom intakes for over a day now. Um, I have data logged with them. They stay about five to eight degrees above ambient temperature. Pretty good. They don't seem to heat soak too bad, and if they do on a very hot day like it was today. Close to 100, then Honestly, they cool off pretty quickly once you start driving, of course. But I did, on my car, just tonight, swapped out the filters that VQ Custom sends. These guys. Nothing wrong with them, but on my custom-made intakes, I had 9-inch long filters with a, uh, I think it was a 6-inch opening for a velocity cone. So I swapped it to those. Um, obviously, it's a bigger filter, more surface area, allows for a better flow, and the velocity cone, same thing. More efficient, better flow. Um, I'm not going to go into velocity cone dynamics, but uh, check out YouTube. It explains all that stuff. But either way, I knew they fit. Um, barely any trimming to EQ Carbon Custom um, intake kit for the rubber hoses to make it fit, but I'll give you a look. Q is still cold, so I'm not going to rev the crap out of it. Side note, VR guys wish it sounded this good. about wraps up the video for my review on VQ Carbon Customs two and a half inch intakes. Um, 
all in all, I'd have to say it's a pretty good buy at 300 bucks with all the powder coating options, and especially because they're a two and a half inch long rim intake, so they do not require a tune, not like a three inch. And as my video shows with the before and after of a stock air box, but let's talk about the most common questions with these kind of intakes. Since they're in the right behind the front grill, do they get dirty? Do they get wet? The short answer is yes. Um, obviously, I made my own intakes for this. I've made three inch long ram intakes that put it in the lower portion of the grill on a Q50. Um, I live in Montana. It snows eight months of the year and rains the rest. Obviously, when it's downpouring rain, don't be hot dogging all over the place and you should be fine. They do get dirty, rinse them out every couple months and everything should be good. It's never thrown engine lights or anything like that for having the intakes. Just don't drive through a puddle sucking up water. That's obviously the water's up to your door sill or anything like that. Well, that's all I got everyone until the next product review. Thanks for watching.